Good morning, friends. <laughs> Welcome back to another Apples and TRs vlog. 6.30 in the morning, and I'm bringing in a big old load. These are all my son's Hot Wheels and tracks, and I will explain why when I get upstairs. can't escape elevators. So my friend Kyle Cohen just showed this baby off. I forget if it was Instagram or YouTube or what, but literally these are a lifesaver. I've had this since last year. Um, Mandy actually introduced it to me a couple years ago when we taught together in Mesa. And um, they were immediately on our must buy for our next school year. And then once I came here, I got them. Um, but they are a lifesaver. All of my Christmas lights, all of my lamps, everything is on a switch, which makes everything so much easier. Okay, so I had to switch filming to my phone because my camera is extremely dead and is really not wanting to charge. So today is Monday, January 24th. Yes, 24th. I knew it. I did a good job. I never remember the date, honestly. Like, it's the last thing on my mind. Um, it should be the first thing on my mind, but it's not. So I'm here super extra early because my parents are in town and they offered to bring cash to school for me. So I get a little bit of extra work time. I do have duty this morning, which is great because I have a problem. We have a problem. My school is completely out of toner, printer toner. Um, I don't know about the office printer but teachers aren't really supposed to be using the office printer except for emergencies um and we don't really need paper for any emergencies so um all three teacher computers or sorry all three teacher printers are completely out of toner so teachers can't print right now and that is like across our district a lot of schools are out of toner um because and i believe that this is the true story so don't quote me but I'm pretty sure the warehouse where our ink is produced burned down, I think. Um, I think it's in Japan, but I'm not positive. That's the story I heard. Anyways, I was supposed to print out six tracks today because I'm doing mystery science. If you guys have not heard of mystery science, give me a few minutes and I will fill you in. Um, so anyway, I was supposed to print uh, a set of these for each table team. So I have six table teams and I was supposed to print six copies of each of these. Now, because I don't have any ink, I cannot print these. Um, and today we're going to be doing an investigation about hills that involves hills. And there's going to be no investigation if I don't print these tracks. So, in my mind, I thought, okay, well, I can solve this problem. Hot Wheels tracks. So, I brought all of my son's Hot Wheels tracks to school today in this big old bin. And I, I got on Class Dojo on Friday, and I sent a message to all of my family saying, if you have Hot Wheels tracks, please send them in. If you're nervous about them not coming back to you, just write your last name on the back of the track and I will make sure that they return to you. So I figured depending on how many sets of tracks I get, I might put like Joey's track on table six and like 
Katie's track on table four and then my tracks everywhere else. So instead of making paper like roller coasters today, we're gonna make Hot Wheels roller coasters and we're just gonna hope that it all goes well. And if it doesn't, then oh well. Mystery Science is great because at the end of every investigation, it sort of concludes what the students should have seen or should have found in their investigation. So if it goes wrong, oh well. The kids and I are really adaptable and I think it'll be fine. The kids will find it as a fun activity anyway. So I'm gonna give each of the kids an equal amount of Hot Wheels tracks once I see what comes in and just tell them, okay, this is what the setup is supposed to look like. Go ahead and set it up as best you can using the materials you have. And if it doesn't work out, oh well, then we learn from that. Um, and so I do have all of my son's Hot Wheels tracks here, including a lot of his cars. So hopefully I'll get some more tracks. I know I have two teachers that are willing to share their Hot Wheels tracks with me, which is great. So even if I just get those two teachers to bring in a ton, I think I'll have enough for six teams, maybe even one for me. All right, I wanna talk to you guys about mystery science because it is a tool, a program that I've been using for the last few weeks and I can't tell you enough good stuff about it. So I'm gonna prop you up here in front of my screen and teach you about mystery science. This is not a sponsored video, by the way. I just really love mystery science. I discovered it a few years ago when I taught third grade, but I didn't use it too, too often because I didn't really get time to do science too much in my old districts which is another reason why I love working here because the kids are involved in science almost every single day. I, te I teach departmentalized science, so I teach science all day long. Aside from when I'm doing social studies, I do teach both, but science I do more of because they are tested in science from third to fifth grade. Um, they're tested in fifth grade here in Arizona. So science is a little bit more of a priority, but I do still teach social studies and I do take it very seriously. So Mystery Science is an online virtual program that aligns to next generation science standards, most of them. Um, so in Arizona, I am required to teach Arizona science standards. However, they are pretty aligned with next gen. It's just that like a third grade next gen standard might be an Arizona standard for fourth grade. So they kind of, they all align. It's just the year that they're going to be assessed on that standard is different if that makes sense. So at my school, my principal has asked me to follow both set of standards to whatever discretion I want because at eventually the third and fifth grade band will be taught and they'll be tested on all of those standards. So by the time they get to fifth grade, they will have been taught all the third through fifth Arizona, all the third through fifth next gen because all third through fifth aligns pretty closely. Anyway, so Mystery Science is amazing because it not only introduces scientific topics and concepts and phenomena, but it always includes a hands-on investigation for every lesson, and I love that. It also includes assessments, activities, all of the paper sheets that you're gonna need, all the printout materials that you're gonna need. Everything is included. You may have to buy like paper clips or tape or like Play-Doh or things like that, but pretty much everything is given to you. Um, and it's presented in this really cool video. And everything, there, you sh most lessons have an anchor phenomena that the kids watch first, and it's all connected throughout the mysteries or lessons. Um, and so we are on lesson three out of eight for this unit. And it is, why is the first hill of a roller coaster always the highest? So the kids are creating roller coasters and connecting energy, speed, um, force, all of that stuff within their investigations. So I really love Mystery Science, which is why you've been seeing Mystery Science in the background on the TV. I just think it's an amazing resource. Another thing, my district science person, the trainer, the person who does all the professional developments for the district for science, came to my class and I, I asked her to do a model lesson because I really wanted to wrap my mind around these three dimensional standards, the cross cutting concepts of next gen, all of those things. If you're not a science teacher, you probably have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, but she said that mystery science was probably the best aligned curriculum or program that she has seen thus far because it does allow students to think outside the box and really 
not the teacher teaching anything, but really the kids investigating, exploring, and researching on their own, um, which is hard to wrap your mind around if you're a teacher, because for me, it's like, okay, teach vocabulary, teach the concept, um, practice with it, do an experiment to test. But really, we should be letting our students drive all of it. So this does a really good job getting the kids thinking about things, getting them questioning things, making observations, and I really, really love it. So if you're a science teacher and, or maybe you only get like 30 minutes of science per day, mystery science is great because there are natural stopping points where you could do 30 minutes a day and still accomplish it. I really love this because I can do two mysteries a week. So I should be done with this unit of um, energy in a couple more weeks and then I'll hit social studies for a few weeks. So anyway, that's mystery science. Um, so last week on Friday, the kids set up their bumper coaster roller coasters. Now the reason I left these out is because I'm wondering if we can use these tracks to create the new coasters and not have to use the Hot Wheels tracks. All the kids really need are to be able to make hills and attach them to these roller coasters which I have note cards and I figure if we cut the note cards into smaller pieces, we could probably make the different size hills that way. So I'm just gonna come over here and shop in my little science bins. These are all science material bins, um, by the way. I would really like to store them differently. In fact, I think next year I might put them on this little iron thing or maybe get another one. That was a really good investment. Um, because my closet is just full of more stuff that I don't use very often, but wanna keep. So anyway, I'm gonna pull these note cards. We used these for a STEM activity a few weeks ago. And um, so they've all been touched and crinkled and folded and prodded and all that stuff. So I'm just gonna grab them. And if we can use them today to create some hills, great. If we can't, if we can't create hills and do this experiment with the current tracks that we have, then I will pull the Hot Wheels tracks out and we'll try it that way. I still think it would be really cool though because the kids can connect like energy, speed, all of that stuff to Hot Wheels and then maybe do some more experimenting at home. So I'm gonna just hang back here for a little bit, go through this lesson one more time, update my daily agenda planner with all of the upcoming events that are taking place in here and just kind of update. I do have an observation coming up in a couple of weeks so I can work on that one um, and then I will get some footage of the kids when they begin investigating later. Okay, so now that my camera is charged, <laughs> I'll just tell you guys how the day went. So during my first block, I ended up pulling two groups over to do the investigation with the Hot Wheels tracks. Let me show you. So this whole setup, I just put the stools there so that when the kids were walking around, they didn't kick the track over. So this was all set up over there in that corner. And what I quickly realized after teaching the first block was that it's going to take three times as long to do each group separately. So for the second class, I had everybody gather around the tracks and we all observed at the same time. And I just pulled a couple of kids to be my helpers to release the, the uh, Hot Wheels from the top of the hill. And it ended up working so much better. We got through the entire lesson in block two and I think we'll get through the entire lesson in block three. So why don't we have Taryn release it first and everybody else watch. I can't see. Okay. Can you see? Okay, so the bumper car made it into the goal, but the hill car did not. So go ahead and move your cars to where they need to be on the trial one spot. So the first one uh, ended in, where did it end? I couldn't see. Put it back where it ended. Me? I'm going to go. Right there? Okay. So the first Hot Wheel ended in the first valley, and the bumper Hot Wheel um, landed in the goal. Okay, so everybody move your Hot Wheels to where they need to be on your screen before we do the next trial. Oh my gosh, it's right there. It's hitting that valley. It and it's, oh, it's the tape. Get it, Bristol. You will want to replace the tape? Am I doing it Okay, where did that roll of tape go that was on that stool? Let's replace the tapes. Am I doing it right? You're doing a good job. Yeah, replace the tape. It was kind of crooked, too. It worked without the tape? Okay, then let's remove that tape and we should be good. 
This deep? Yeah. No, it's fine now. It should be fine now. Okay, let's try it now. All right, Jason, Aiden, you ready? There's a little air bubble on the tape. Is it on the wheel? There it goes. Oh, it shoots it up. So when the when it shoots up, uh, it like. So that just means that tomorrow I need to plan something that is more of like a review or something that my second two blocks can do um, so that the other class can get caught up and finished. So I'm going to try to figure that out, but I do have to fill out this parent-teacher conference form because those are next week. Now, personally, in my opinion, I think that if teacher conferences are coming up, that notice should be given out prior to the week before. I think that two weeks notice is a lot better, especially for parents who work. But what's great is that all of our conferences are online, so most parents will show up. Now, because we're departmentalized, sorry, I'm just going to grab and heat up my lunch. Because we are departmentalized, we only need to meet with our bottom 10 students and their families. Or if a parent requests a conference, then we meet with them as well. So we don't meet with every single family every time we do conferences. It's only the ones that we feel need it. So yeah, so that is how my day is going. I have not sat down once. During my prep period, I actually moved some things around. So I'm gonna show you the changes I made um, while my food is cooking. So I actually moved my black tablecloth table back here to my small group area. And I like it because this is kind of like a teacher work area, or at least it was and it has been. Um, but what I like about it is I moved the um, table here, my flexi spot up front to be my teaching table instead of this one because I found that this one was a little bit small and now I have a little bit more room for all of my stuff. I can do demonstrations on this table now. This one is great because it's um, like it rises and falls, but this one does the exact same thing, but it's just bigger. So I just plopped myself right here. I kind of moved some things around. I moved this up here um, and then this, I have my flexible seating stored over there. This is also part of flexible seating now because a student can stand at that table if they need it. So I also like having that option for the kids as well. So this is all over here. Um, but yeah, so that's what I did during my prep time. And I did have quite a few students helping me that were in the other room, in Mandy's room, who had lost their special. So they were happy to come and help me kind of organize this area. So um, now I do have a small group table back here. And what I like about this too is that I can push this back and have even more room if I need it. All right, my friends, so it is the end of the day. I just got back up from afternoon recess duty and I'm exhausted. So I'm gonna end this vlog here. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys!